So we're continuing our discussion and uh, looking at elasticity. So we've already had a look at price elasticity of demand. Now we look at the three remaining ones, uh, which includes income elasticity of demand, cross price elasticity of demand, and then price elasticity of supply. So let's start with income elasticity of demand. Income elasticity of demand has to do with the change in consumer's income. Okay, so what is the percentage change in the quantity demanded as a result of a change in a consumer's income? So the consumer's income change, for example. And as a result of the change, consumers decide to either buy more or buy less. And the value or the, the, the size of this influence is actually calculated through the elasticity. So it's again, it's a percentage change. In quantity demanded as a result of a percentage change in as of our consumers income okay so this is how we write it so the change in quantity is influenced by the consumers income that has changed uh, either positive or negative okay so in this case the sign in front of the elasticity is very important because the sign gives us an indication of what type of good is this so let's have a look at the next slide, which will then illustrate uh, what I'm referring to. So you will remember that uh, more or less we have three big ranges of elasticity. We have il relatively elastic uh, elasticity, we have uh, unitary elasticity, and then we have uh, inelasticity. Okay, so the bigger the value, the more elastic it becomes. The, the smaller the value, the less or lower the value of elasticity. So it becomes less elastic. So looking at this line, uh, we can first divide a good into two types of goods. If the elasticity has a value between 0 and uh an infinite negative so it's a negative value that means that this is an inferior good it means that as your income increase you buy less of the good okay so the value of the percentage increase is negative so increase in, in income you use or you you demand less of the good and then it's a normal good if the value is positive so if it's a positive value it means that as your income increase, you will buy or demand more of the good, which means that it's a normal good. Okay, so within the normal good, uh, we distinguish between a necessity and a luxury good. So a, a necessity or good that's necessary, but like basic goods like bread, uh, milk, uh, sugar for instance, uh, maize meal, etc., the value of the elasticity will be between 0 and 1. But it's a plus signal. So it's a positive signal and it's between 0 and 1. That means it's a necessity. If the value is above 1, that means it's, it's actually fairly elastic. It's plus 1. That means it's a luxury good. So as your income increase, you're willing to buy more of the luxury good, but the elasticity is higher as well. Positive 1.7, positive 2. Okay, but it also implies that as your income change, it becomes negative. There might be a reduction, there should be a reduction in the quantity demanded because it's more elastic. So we have our inelastic uh, portion which is between 0 and 1, it's 0 and 1, positive or negative, and if it's positive and higher, more, and higher than 1, bigger than 1, okay, it's a luxury good and it's elastic, relatively elastic. If it's between 0 and minus, so it's anything 0 and negative, irrespective of the value, um, it's then an inferior good. So let's do an example. So, Joanne receives a 15% salary increase. Her elasticity of demand, uh, income elasticity of demand is zero, uh, negative 0 0.35. 
for a steer's burger. Now we want to know calculate how her salary increase will affect her demand for steer's hamburgers and as what type of good a steer's hamburger can be classified as. So how do we calculate that? So we know that income uh, elasticity of demand, this is the formula that we use to calculate that. So if we look at this, we can actually see that we have two of these variables already. So we just need to calculate uh, the one that's missing. So in this case, we know that Joanne receives a 15% increased salary. So the cha percentage change in income is 15%. We know that uh, uh, income elasticity is minus 0 0.35. So our elasticity we already have. So we just substitute those variables or those values and then the question is calculate how her salary increase will affect her demand for Steers Burger. So the change or the percentage change in quantities then we refer to that as what will be the impact on her demand. So we just need to calculate the value for the percentage change in quantity. So let's write that. So first of all we know Elasticity of demand is minus 0 0.35. We know that a change in quantity, percentage change in quantity, sorry, in income, and that is 15%. So if we rewrite, maybe I could just continue with this one, and then we rewrite and we find percentage change in quantity, which will then be our x. In our example okay so let's get the value so we have minus 0 0.35 is equal to a change in quantity percentage change in quantity that we don't know so that we're going to make X divided by a percentage change in income that is 15% or we can rewrite it as 0 0.15 which is also 15% if you multiply that by 100 so that's 15% so that means we have um, if we divide and if we have a division on this side we multiply by 0 0.15 on the other side and on that side to make it zero so it's minus 0 0.35 minus 0 0.35 and we multiply that with 0 0.15 and that will then be equal to x okay and then we say uh, the negative sign, uh, sorry, we then say we multiply that with 100 to get a percentage change. So that means it will be minus 5.25 equal to x, equal to x. And this will be a percentage. That means it will be a negative. 0.25% reduction, it will be a reduction of 5.25% in purchasing of Steers hamburgers if the income increase by 15%. So let's move this one to the side, I'm just going to make it smaller. So we want to know the increase affected demand for Steers, so Steers hamburgers will, the demand it will decrease by 5.25%. Okay, and the second one is it will what type of product will hamburgers be classified at as as a result of a decrease as your income increase and your, and your usage decrease that means it will be an inferior good. So the next elasticity is cross price elasticity of the bond. So here we look at how the quantity demanded of product A changes as a result in a change in price of product B. So how sensitive is a quantity demanded of one product um, if a related product, uh, the price of the related product changes. Okay, so that is cross price elasticity. And again, here the value and the sign in front of the elasticity gives us an indication of what type of product it is. So when we look at cross price elasticity, we look at uh, predominantly two goods. We look at complementary goods and substitution goods. So 
A complementary good is a product which is below zero and it has a negative value. So it's minus uh, one, minus 0 0.3, minus eight. Okay, so that's a complementary good. That means a change in price of product A has a negative impact on the percentage change in quantity, so a decrease in quantity. So if the price increase of the one product, the quantity demanded of the other product decreases, then that is a complementary good. If the price or if the value is positive uh, from zero upwards and it's positive, that means a change in uh, price of the one good has a positive impact in the change in quantity demanded of the other good. That means people are moving or shifting from the one good, the one with the price increase, and rather than buying the other good, which is then a substitute good. So, important cross-price elasticity, the value, if it's below zero and it's negative, is a complementary good, meaning the price increase has a negative impact on the amount purchased. If it's positive, it means it's a substitution product. Uh, an increase in price will have a positive impact on the substitute good. Uh, so the increase in product B, the quantity will then increase. So that is a positive and negative for cross price elasticity. So here we have an example, and the example is between Coke and chips. And uh, so the percentage change in the quantity demanded of product A, let's say Coke, what is the impact going to be on the quantity of uh, product B? So you evaluate that, we use arc formula, or arc elasticity formula to calculate the value. If it's a positive value, we know that this will then be substitution product. If it's a negative, we will know that this is a complementary good. So when you calculate the value, uh, which I'm not going to do at this point in time, but the value will be minus 1, which means that for this uh, example, uh, it shows that Coke and chips is complementary to one another, and, um, and, and the value of, of minus 1. So you can go and evaluate and actually do this one and see if you can get to minus 1. The last elasticity is price elasticity of supply. So similar to price elasticity of demand. The only difference between price elasticity of supply and demand is that the value, the elasticity, the value of elasticity in this case will be a positive value. Okay, and for each of uh, the elasticity values that you uh, quantify, that you calculate, uh, again there's five categories and it's similar to the elasticity of demand. Lastly, I just want to quickly indicate to you, illustrate to you the relationship between uh, price elasticity of demand and total revenue. Okay, so in eventually what happens is we have a company, they need to decide are we going to increase or decrease prices. We get the elasticity and that also is indicative of the total revenue. So let's have a look. So total revenue increases as if we Let's start like this. If you have elasticity above 1, so it's relatively elastic, and you increase your price, so you decide, let's move from 14 to 18 rand. The impact on total revenue is going to be from 64,000. This is in thousands, by the way, the quantity. So it's from 84,000 to around 36,000. Uh, total revenue that will um, the shift will take place. So an increase in price with an elastic uh, supply or so demand uh, will decrease the total revenue. If you have inelastic uh, demand and you decrease the price, you decrease the price. That moves it to that means it's moved from from six rand to two rand you will also decrease your total revenue. Or opposite, if you increase your price from 2 Rand to 6 Rand, you will increase your total revenue. And at elastic demand, the same, if you, if you, in this case, if you decrease the price, you will increase your revenue. Okay, so that's the relationship between the two. Have a look at your textbook 
and it's also clearly this is explained explained there. 